views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. This show's audio was via a Skype call. You are listening to A Space of Allowing Radio with Coach Nancy Coco, welcoming all that wants to be present today. Tune in Thursdays every first and third week at 9 a.m. Pacific as Coach Nancy helps you find a space of allowing, a unique environment where all beings and all energies are welcome to show themselves and be loved. Are you ready to know your whole self and live a more authentic, non-resistant, joyful life? Are you ready to be acknowledged and welcomed home? Join a space of allowing radio for some deep allowing to explore what lives at your edges and to bring more of yourself home. Here is your host, Coach Nancy Coco. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to a space of allowing radio. I'm Coach Nancy Coco, and Oh, I feel like all the doors and windows of my heart I'm opening to this day. That's a quote uh, that I've loved for many years by John Greenleaf Whittier. And we are opening doors and windows in our lives today for the gift of forgiveness. Um, not only because this happens to be when the show is airing right around the holidays in the United States. And so, you know, we're wrapping packages and we're thinking about, you know, each other in loving ways and all that. But um, any time that you click on this link and listen to the show, I think is going to be something that enables you to open new doors and windows in your heart, really having an opportunity to go beyond the everyday and the ways that we think about ourselves and our lives and really have that spirit of love and forgiveness. And of course, I seriously cannot do this alone, so I'm so pleased and grateful to be able to welcome back to A Space of Allowing Radio my friend and fellow coach, Carmen Marshall. Hello, my dear. How are you today? Hi, Nancy. Really excited to be with you today. So happy to be with you on this topic. And in fact, um, just to share with the listeners, uh, I hosted a retreat a little bit earlier this year, Space of Allowing, as you can imagine. And Carmen was uh, able to not only attend, but also to share some wisdom on this topic of love and forgiveness. And so I'm really thrilled to have you here. You know, just to share with the listeners a little bit about your background, I know that you have been an expert trainer and facilitator for many years, um, a management consultant really for over 20 years now, a leader and executive both in the profit, in the nonprofit and corporate sectors. I love, Carmen, how you help clients really lean into and confront challenges um, with strategic business solutions. And I would say even individuals, I know you've coached me at different times and you've helped me to face the challenges that I face, maybe love and forgiveness being a couple of those challenges. So what are you looking forward to in today's show, Carmen? Tell me. Wow. You know, relationships are complicated, aren't they? Or at least they can be sometimes. And so I'm hoping that today we can sort of um, dig around in what makes them complicated and um, how we can live a life um, um, a full, rich, enjoyable, and satisfying relationships. Um, whether they are intimate and personal, like spouse and partner and, um, you know, parental or whatever. Um, But even um, the co-worker and work relationships, you know, just Mm -hmm. uh, just hope that we can just tap into um, what how to get the best um, out of them and how to bring our best to those relationships and just how love and forgiveness plays in that. You know, and I'm, I'm, as you're talking, I'm even envisioning the, the one-offs, you know, that occasional, uh, passing in the hallway or Mm -hmm. on a road, you're in your car and they're in their car and you're having a moment, you know, not necessarily a road rage (laughs) moment, but just a moment, right? People are shopping right now and they're all lined up and they've got their arms full and their minds are on other things. And we really just want to, uh, invite everybody who's listening in this hour 
to allow yourselves to put all those things down that you carry in your arms, put all those things down that you carry in your hearts and give yourself really the gift of opening, of spaciousness and certainly of allowing. And so as we step into this, um, I, I love some of the words, Carmen, that you had said to me, I keep sort of as a mantra. So would you mind if I read some of these back to you? Some of the oh, things sure. that you said to me about love. It's almost like a poem. I hope that you write this up. I know that you do writing too. But <laughs> so everybody listening out there, you might want to grab a, a, a pad and pen just in case you want to jot some little special words down that are touchstones for you as I do every time I talk to my friends. And this is what Carmen had said recently. She said about love. Love is spiritual. Love is eternal. Love is a weapon of mass destruction, of fear, anxiety, and depression. Love is a person. Love is spirit. Love is the essence of God and who you are. There isn't anything you can do to be separated from that love. And it's that to me is just something that I'm wrapping around me like this beautiful, warm gift. And, you know, we're talking about forgiveness today, but we really are also, of course, have to talk about love. So just how would you like to enter the stream? Let's talk a little bit about those two concepts of love and forgiveness as partners in this journey. Sometimes when we conflict with other people, um, we forget how much we ourselves are deeply loved. Mm -hmm. We forget how precious and treasured we are by the one who created us. Mm -hmm. And um, and when we forget that it's like being lost in the woods mm. um, and trying to fight your way out, when we forget that um, we are fearfully and wonderfully made and that we are divinely um, created and divinely loved, when we forget those things, it's easy to just walk around in the flesh, in the body, just thinking of ourselves as blood and bones and skin and, you know, tissue <laughs> Yeah, and it's true. Even when I coach with people, you know, we do have the physical dimension that gives us a lot of wisdom. So what is our body cluing us into about, mm -hmm. you know, right now in this moment? But it's also the spirit and soul dimension of our lives, yeah. you know, and if it's uh, uh, if it's um, a creator, if it's God, if it's uh, the universe, if it's nature, whatever it is that is that greater, higher connection that is even beyond the physical self is, I would agree with you. I think that's something that we lose sight of because we're, our eyes are too close to the ground or too close to the cell phone or too mm -hmm. close to the, whatever, you know, the wash that needs to be done or whatever is, you know, pressing in the moment. We don't allow ourselves to look up and to be reminded, to be plugged back into that eternal spirit, to that eternal right. energy that is non-negotiable, that never goes away. And when we forget that, then it's easy to see each other as less than, as unimportant, yeah. Yeah. right? As easy to dismiss, as easy to minimize. Yeah, because I feel, I'm just feeling my energy as you're saying that. And I feel my energy going out toward you, like with judging eyes. Mm -hmm. Rather than to turn inward and just kind of cradle my own heart and nourish my own sense of self so that I can allow myself to move forth with greater strength and serenity, really. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm all about you, 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 it's like uh, one of those old uh, TV shows where everybody was, you know, they have the, I don't want to say the name of <laughs> One or two mm -hmm. of them, but they're coming mm -hmm. to mind. You know, those talk shows where everybody was pitted <laughs> against everybody else. It was such right? awful energy. <laughs> it was terrible. Oh, my word, right? And yeah. instead, th there wouldn't be much of a show if you and I sat together and we both went inside and checked in and made sure that we were okay. And yet that, I think, really is one of the secrets to this love and forgiveness. Um, Absolutely. So talk a little bit we more about that if you can. Yeah, we were created, Nancy, we were created for a relationship. Mm -hmm. And if you can get hurt in a relationship, then I believe you can get healed in relationship. Oh, and I love that. Wait, okay, let's just rest with that because I, I'm ready for that message. 
This is the wisdom I'm ready for because I'm feeling a very active engagement with different relationships right now. And I am not all settled in that. Mm -hmm. So if I can get hurt in relationship, if first of all, if I even allow myself to step into a relationship with someone else, because I don't, don't, I haven't been so trusting because I feel like I've been hurt. So if I first allow myself to step into relationship with someone else, if I get hurt, there's also in relationship an opportunity to get healed. Yes. You see, God created us for relationship. First, you know, relationship with God, which nobody else can satisfy that relationship but God. And then out of that relationship, we learn how to be in relationship with one another. And so if in our relationship as human beings, you know, we can disagree and bump into each other and learn Mm -hmm. and get bruised. And Mm -hmm. it's also in the same community, in in the same relationship that we can get healed, right? Mm -hmm. We can go off to an island and sit and meditate, you know, for a month, but real healing can take place just in the company of a healing environment created yeah. by other human beings. Yeah. Well, and I'll tell you, I mean, that the intention of a space of allowing is mm-hmm. to just soften, is to release judgment, is to welcome whatever comes, not to be prickly, you know, and harsh mm-hmm. and cold to it, but rather to soften and to be curious and to bring some love around that. And hoping that, you know, as our listeners continue with us through this hour, you even feel a little bit of an energetic shift inside you as Mm -hmm. we allow ourselves to step into this space and look a little bit more closely at the gift of forgiveness. And so I will return with my guest, Carmen Marshall, right after these messages. Are you tired of being tired? Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. Did you know the adrenal glands, the workhorse of the body? They are the means by which you position yourself in life for whatever comes your way. Tiny but mighty, producing hormones the body uses to promote energy and vitality. These adrenals determine how you respond to stress, and when depleted, the body loses its ability to function powerfully when we need it most. The much-needed adrenaline or epinephrine is not available for emergency situations. Cortisone and cortisol, the longer-acting anti-stress adrenal hormones, can also become depleted due to the pace of our everyday lives. We overwork and undernutrition our most powerful ally that helps us to live the lives we desire. We are able to determine the optimum function of the adrenals and put your system back in balance. Contact us today to feel powerfully energized at 888-777-4232 or visit us at maryjanemack.com. Welcome back, everyone, to A Space of Allowing. Today, we're giving ourselves and each other the gift of forgiveness. And I'm so happy to be back with my friend and fellow coach, Carmen Marshall. And um, Carmen, you may know, uh, one of the things I love to do is just collect quotes. I just love these quotables that I find, you know, in different places. I put them in my dashboard, in the car. I put them on my refrigerator, on my mirror in the morning as I'm getting ready. And I have this one um, uh, from Maya Angelou that says, it's one of the greatest gifts you can give yourself to forgive. Mm. It's one of the greatest gifts you can give yourself to forgive. And then she says, forgive everybody. Mm-hmm. So. It doesn't feel that easy, though. <laughs> you know, she just says well, it and well, has the wisdom of many, many decades beyond my living. But let's go further well, into the territory of forgiveness. Yeah, let's talk about what it is and what it isn't. You know, okay. sometimes it's hard because we struggle with what the definition of forgiveness is. And, mm. um, and I believe in keeping it simple. So let's start with what forgiveness is not. All right. I have my pen handy. Go for it. <laughs> so <laughs> forgiveness is not excusing the offense. Right. Or the transgression. It's not ex- making excuses for it or, or saying it didn't happen. It's not minimizing or condoning it. That's not um, the kind of allowing that we're talking about here. No. We allow something no. like that. No, right. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
No, 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 no. Um, and so, um, because if it was, you know, if we all we had to do was just minimize it or pretend it didn't happen, then what's the point of giving someone? Forgiveness is also not reconciliation, right? Oh. Um, because reconciliation takes time um, to build the, rebuild the relationship. It ta- if you can do that, it takes time to um, regain and rebuild that trust um, that's required for a solid relationship. So that's what mm. it's not. But, uh, that's interesting. I want to just spend a moment with that because I, I wonder, I have this little sense or feeling that sometimes if someone offers an apology, there's an expectation that immediately you're going to reconcile then. Like that, well, I apologized. Everything should be okay now. And what you're giving me permission to do really here is to say, yeah, but it's still, thank you. Okay. And it still may take some time to actually reconcile, to recover. It's true. Um, okay. and, and especially depending upon the offense, depends on what okay. happened. I yeah. mean, you know, in the case of something really, you know, some major loss or death or death of relationship or, I mean, you know, it, it's relative depending on, you know, who you are and where you, what, how you feel about things. But, you know, um, it's not an automatic reconciliation of a relationship exactly sometimes a a divorce has been so bitter and so painful and so wretched that the relationship may never reconcile Mm. but forgiveness is still possible well and that right there is a gift honestly just to allow myself to uncouple those two things Mm -hmm. and to think about forgiveness as one act that can heal Whereas reconciliation is a path that you may walk that may take you away from what you originally think where it's going to lead. Absolutely. And see, forgiveness is, well, it, it's, um, forgiveness is an act and a process. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. It's an act, the act of forgiveness where um, it starts with a decision. That's the first step in forgiving. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's the decision to forgive. That's number one. If I had to give you like a one, two, three. Yeah. Uh, forgiveness is, first of all, a decision. And it's a decision of the heart. Mm. And it has nothing to do with someone asking you for forgiveness. It has everything to do with you, the decision of your heart mm. to forgive. And so it's an act. Number two, it's an act. And number three, it's a process. Mm -hmm. And there's that time element that binds them all together. So on the one hand, we can, I can, you know, say you and I, you know, um, had a conflict and um, I may decide to forgive and yet you may never ask me for forgiveness. Uh But if I want to move on, if I want to go forward, I have to make the decision to forgive. And so that may shatter a lot of um, preconceived notions that people have in relationships that if I'm the offended party, right, you should come to me and ask for forgiveness. Mm. That may never happen, (laughs) though, sometimes. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Well, see, and then that's us looking outward to try to get our needs met out there somehow, as opposed right. to looking inward and saying, this is my decision and I am, I right. am at this moment ready or I'm at this moment not ready, whatever it happens to be. So it's it's allowing ourselves permission to own our own process, to right. search our own hearts, to fill ourselves with the love that's needed in order to even take the steps to make that decision to forgive. Right. And so it's a, it's a decision to forgive. And I believe that if you're a human being, everybody at some point in their life will need to forgive. And I believe Mm -hmm. that if you ever want to receive forgiveness, then you have to give forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And so with that mind, then I decide, I make a decision to forgive. And then I take that step to to the act of forgiveness where I actually step out on faith and step and believe and say, okay, I forgive my, I forgive Nancy. <laughs> right. 
Nancy yeah. may not ever ask me for forgiveness, may not care about the offense, may never come to me and say, you know, I'm really sorry about this and so, or I apologize. She may never do that. But right now it's all about me moving to a higher level. Yeah, well, I think that that's maybe a, a little unexpected gift that we're giving ourselves, actually, is to make that decision to forgive. You know, sometimes I I wrestle with things. I wrestle with things in my head. I wrestle with things in my heart. I, I, I feel the jitteriness of anxiety over upset that I'm mm -hmm. carrying around, I'm carrying around, I'm carrying around. And over a long period of time, it's gotten a little bit easier, but over a long period of time with lots of support of counselors and coaches, I recognize my capacity to allow myself to, it's almost like Carmen after a while, it's almost like flipping a switch. It's like, okay, I think I'm ready. And I let go. Mm -hmm. It's a letting go. It's a releasing. Mm -hmm. And I don't even like yeah. now, I don't even feel necessary to go up to you and tell you that I forgive, mm -hmm. you know, no, it's something no, that, that I've right. taken care. It's like going through the car wash and getting the windows washed. Okay. Now it's clear. I can see again. I've cleared, <laughs> I've cleared my path again, you know, where again, I think in my little kid way, I might've thought that forgiveness before meant, you know, to make an act of contrition. Like, you know, you have to go and apologize and they have to receive your apology. Otherwise the whole thing is a terrible failure. And really what we're doing today is allowing ourselves to uncouple each of those pieces of forgiveness and to do the part that is within our hearts to do. You see, unforgiveness chains the soul. <laughs> it puts you your mind and your heart on lock. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it, it puts like this big ball and chain yeah. on your heart. And it disturbs the mind and makes it difficult to move forward. You know, it's like, can you imagine if you had a ball and chain chained to your mind and you're just dragging through the day trying to make decisions trying to, you know, interact with people, you know, doing your work or being a great coach or being a great friend or, you know, whatever. Um, the thing that I'm kind of hearing back a little bit, Carmen, and I don't know how far we'll get with it today, but I'm thinking for some of our listeners, the, the notion of forgiving might just almost be too tall a mountain to climb. Mm -hmm. That's why you need, see, that's why I, you know, I, I respect the fact, Nancy, that um, not everybody embraces the spiritual aspect of life, but I believe you need help to do this. And I believe it comes from above. Yeah. I don't believe that it's just automatic in a, in our flawed humanity. Mm -hmm. And when we understand that God says about us, nothing can ever separate you from my love. When you understand that and, and think about other people in that light, that even if you're, you, somebody's on the highway and they're acting rude and crazy and, you know, giving you the finger in the middle of all of that, that person is deeply loved <laughs> by God and there's yeah. nothing you can do about it. <laughs> yeah, right. It's easy right? to love lovable. <laughs> now they're not acting very loving. <laughs> right. Exactly. right? But, I, I, but I love the point that you just made and I want to repeat it just for my own self so I can take it away with me today. And that, that really has to do with that. I cannot do it my own little self alone. So if it, if it feels too steep a mountain to climb, that's because I am mistakenly thinking I'm doing it all alone. Mm -hmm. And I cannot do it all alone. So that's when I need to call in my resources. That's, that's when I need right. to go to my, my trusted guides. That's when I need to be with those who can help me to anchor myself in what my heart is calling me to do, which is to release, right. to let go. Right. Uh, and see, sometimes, I'm sorry, sometimes we, we, we're waiting for our emotions to catch up. Because sometimes you'll make the decision to forgive and you'll take the step and actually forgive the person and you'll actually let the situation go. And, and, you know, that last piece of it is releasing the person. That is, you no longer hold it against them. That's what forgiveness is, that you no longer, uh, you have pardoned that person. You mm -hmm. You're no longer holding it against them or charging them with the offense, Right. When, and yeah. you actually release them to go on from your heart. You open the chains, open the gates, open the cage, whatever it is, 
and you no longer hold it against them. That is a supernatural act. It is. <laughs> it really <laughs> is. It's just like I feel about that, how how holy that is, how healthy that is, how essential that is, rather than, you know, walking around with our insides so full of transgressions and judgments and hurts and not to say that, as you said, it doesn't excuse the offense. Mm -hmm. It's not about excusing the offense. Instead, it really is about healing yourself and releasing someone else's life from from attachment to it from a toxic and attachment to it exactly exactly and sometimes our emotions are saying wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute <laughs> you can't forgive so and so right oh, yeah. but all we have to do is look in the mirror and think of a time when you hurt someone yeah it's hard to live in this world and not offend somebody at some point oh, yeah well, and in fact, when we return, I would definitely like to go into some of those specific instances that maybe we have lived through that helps, you know, people to see themselves in this conversation that we're having. Um, if you're out there listening and you really feel that you want to call upon someone to help support you in this journey of forgiveness, you can find me at nancycococoaching.com. You can find me on Facebook at Nancy Coco Coaching. Um, and uh, Carmen, how can people find you? They can reach me at, um, they can email me at the year of plan A at gmail.com. And they can find me on the web at carmencmarshall.com. Okay. And when we come back, we'll repeat that information for you and our hearts will be reaching out to continue to unpack this wonderful gift of forgiveness. And we'll be right back. Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit JenRoyster.com for more information. High frequency healing for an amazing life with Source Light Radio. Join host Laura Barton each month on Transformation Talk Radio as she explores Source Light integration, a unique spectrum of energy, light, and frequency. Experience instantaneous healing and amazing shifts in consciousness with Source Light Integrations Radio. For more information on Laura and her work, visit SourceLightIntegrations.com. everyone. Welcome back to A Space of Allowing. I'm Coach Nancy here with my friend and fellow coach Carmen Marshall. And we're having a really spacious and slow and fresh, I hope for all of you, conversation about the gift of forgiveness. You know, as we're, as we're opening this gift, it happens to be holiday time when the show is going to first air, but I think it's a good show to listen to at any time. We think about wrapping packages and then the gift of, you know, celebrating those kinds of things with one another. Um, and yet perhaps the best gift we can give ourselves today is one that you can't actually unwrap with paper and a bow, but one that comes from within us. And so, Carmen, when we close the last segment, I was suggesting that maybe we can talk about some specific instances where forgiveness really is calling to us. Have you had times yeah. in your life where that's really been something that you've had to dig deep and, and, and find a way to do just the thing that we're talking about here? Oh, no, Nancy, I've never needed to give or receive forgiveness. <laughs> Are you kidding? Of course. So, yes, no question. Nope, not me. Next question. <laughs> oh, man, I'm telling you. One of the things I love so much about you is the truth telling, you know, and I, I 
experiences that we share. So, you know, let us hear yeah, some of you, that. Be the same. Yeah. You know, um, and it hasn't been that long ago mm-hmm. um, that I've gone to a loved one and said, you know, I realized when X happened that it hurt you. And that was not my intent. Um, and I'm asking you to forgive me because A, B, and C happened. Um, and and I realized that hurt you. And while mm-hmm. it wasn't the intent, it still resulted in you being hurt. Mm-hmm. And, um, and that was so, first of all, to, to make that phone call. Mm-hmm. Okay. The process I had to go through was um, forgiving myself, letting myself, you know, uh, uh, laying down my own pride, any Mm. temptation to rationalize or explain away. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know, because we all have these little um, secret defense attorneys that just kind (laughs) of hitchhike, you know, (laughs) along with us. Oh, seriously. (laughs) Of course. Right. They can. They always have the talk back. Right. And they pop up at the most, you know, inopportune times and begin to tell us, oh, you don't need to do that. No, you have to fire the defense attorney Mm -hmm. and you pick up the phone or make the arrangement to make the call. And I'm telling you, um, the result um, was so wonderful to be able to hear someone say, you know, it wasn't your fault or I didn't take it that way or whatever. But the point is, is that it it's, it frees your own soul, mm. right? When you recognize that part of the human experience is hurting one another, not mm. to intentionally, but, yeah. you know, there are times people do it intentionally. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's still necessary to forgive. But what I'm saying is that when we remember that we ourselves can be the offender, not just the offended, Mm-hmm, of course, we ourselves can be the transgressor, you know, instead of the right. ones who it, sometimes we need to forgive ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes. I mean, I think of a father who may have walked away from his family mm-hmm. and everybody in the family is calling him, you know, names. But I can imagine, you know, when things get quiet and still, if he's got a heart at all. He might feel really bad about that. You know what I'm saying? Well, I sure do. In fact, again, as you're talking, I always can take it personally in the best sense of, you know, taking something personally. I'm feeling inside me um, a memory of an exchange I had with someone earlier this year where I, I think I I wanted to move toward forgiveness, but I think I was so hurt that I probably just discharged a lot of fear and resentment in that conversation. And I don't think that we built a bridge at that time. And I'm, I'm feeling a little choked up now, which a lot of times this show does to me, (laughs) dear listeners (laughs) have to tell you, I get choked up about this show sometimes because I really think it's the opportunity that I have to grant myself, uh, you know, an opportunity to, to step to a pure state, to be more wholehearted, to be more truthful, to be whatever it happens to be in this case, um, to perhaps return to that individual because we didn't mend fences. We didn't build a bridge. We did not reconcile. Mm -hmm. Um, and I would say learning from you today, Carmen, I, I probably wasn't grounded in my whole eternal self. I was probably just my little Nancy self feeling hurt and feeling disappointed and kind of discharging all that on someone else. And that didn't move us toward any better. So I hope I get a do-over. I'm going to try a do-over, I think. And and see, when the chains come off your own soul, Mm. then you're free to free someone else, right? It's when we allow our hurt to keep us in bondage that we find it difficult to free someone else. Oh, impossible, right? Impossible to free anyone else. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's like first. going to the hospital, but refusing to be treated. Yeah. <laughs> right. You just want to talk about where it hurts, but don't touch me. You want to oh. talk about how the accident occurred, oh. you know, but don't give me oh, and don't do anything. I really anything. feel that. I'm really <laughs> feeling that. I think I'm relating way too much with that. Right now. <laughs> 
But I think that's the point. Honestly, I will live this out loud for all of our listeners because that's the truth. I'm feeling that, mm-hmm. you know, that's where it hurts, but don't touch me. Right. Um, that. But you have someone who loves you eternally. I mean, you have, I'm telling you, and that's why it's hard for me to talk about forgiveness apart from God, even though I understand everybody doesn't embrace that concept. I know that that's where the healing is. And so when you can take your hurt and you, and you have some place to put it, right? And you can say, God, your hands are much bigger than mine. I'm going to put my hurt in your hand. And you can tell him, this is what hurt. This is what happened. This is how it happened. This is how I felt about it. And then you can trust those big hands to hold it. Right. And, and I, I mean, I, I, I actually have a, I would say a, a kind of a companion way of thinking about that. Because a lot mm-hmm. of times when I'm, when I'm torn up inside and I really feel myself that jittery, anxious, overcome, I can't get my footing again because emotionally I've tumbled into, you know, engagement with this upset. I have to get outside. I have to walk the path. I have a couple of paths that I walk near my home and, and I have a sense of spirit that I talk to inside me. Mm -hmm. So I think it's that same sort of notion. I just call it something different, but it's, it's my higher self. It's my greater, it's, it's, the the oneness of all of us that I feel that I'm talking to. And maybe that's a little like abstract to think about, but we all have our own ways of, mm-hmm. of clearing. And that's the only way I can do it really is to get out yeah. to, to break the cycle. If I stayed at my desk and then ate dinner and then went to bed, it would just stick with me. I wouldn't be able to detach myself from it, to see it rationally right. again, you know? Right. Um, and, and when we, when we're able to be open, to just the thought of receiving forgiveness. You know, when, when, when we're the ones in need, it's easy to easier sometimes to receive forgiveness, you know, um, rather than give it. But in reality, if we take the perspective that love doesn't keep score, mm. that love doesn't put in chains, that love doesn't, keep a record of wrong done to it, that love always believes the best of someone, right? That love is looking for the best in that person, right? That love never quits doing that. And so it behooves us, you know, to open up to the idea of giving and receiving forgiveness. I got to do a yeah, but here because again I feel like I'm channeling some people listening to us right now going yeah but I can't even put myself in the presence of this other person I don't feel safe I don't feel invited I don't feel like I can compose myself I don't I just can't so then what do you do what do you do when you can't the work has to start with you you see it's not always reciprocal right well, and I need to hear that too. Okay. Because I think I'm making a lot of assumptions about things. So mm-hmm. it's not, it's not necessarily going to be reciprocated. It may just be me doing the work of the work. That's right. It's you not hold. In other words, don't become the prison guard that goes around collecting prisoners or, or memories that, um, or, or people who've wronged us. See, sometimes the act is, the the transgression is so egregious. Yeah, yeah. Right? And there's Mm -hmm. no reconciliation. But you can still find peace. And you can still um, be open to love. And it may take time. But it may not be with the person who offended you, hurt you, molested you, lied on you, betrayed you. It may never be with that person. I mean, yeah. miracles do happen and it could. But there are a lot of situations that you and I both know about that there's no, you know, writing that wrong. You yeah, know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. And so the work has to be done on this side, on our right. side. Well, and that really to me is the gift that we're engaged in today that we're unpacking today is that what just what you were saying in the second segment what what it is and what it isn't Mm -hmm. and for me this is a lesson in what it isn't 
Because, mm-hmm. again, I think my simple-minded child self thinks, you know, forgiveness is all of these things in the same package. And it really may not be. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't mean that because I can't have reconciliation that I still can't forgive, that I can't clear That's right. from my heart. So that I don't, this, like you say, unforgiveness chains the soul and disturbs the mind. I don't want to have my soul in chains. I don't want to have my mind disturbed. I need to be able to move forward with love in my heart, no matter what has occurred around and perhaps not ever to engage the other individual, but just rather to work from the inside out. And it's a seed because once we sow that seed of forgiveness and practice it, Mm. right, then we can look forward to a harvest where we have a heart that is open and ready and easily, um, that easily forgives. Right. Yeah. Well, that's a gift too, right? I wanted to say that because I want to, I want to savor each of the things that you're saying and what I'm Mm -hmm. feeling, you know, as I listen to you say that is to seed, I realize how small, how gentle, Mm -hmm. how little a gesture may shift that energy. If I just, even if I'm just listening to the show today, something may shift for me in a way that never I've never been ready to allow to shift in me before. And so the the beautiful nature of taking that first step to plant that first seed and then how that grows and helps me to be a more robust, more loving, even in the face of certain uh, difficulties, uh, kind of individual with the capacity mm-hmm. to forgive, with the capacity mm-hmm. to love beyond love. Right. And the more we do it, the more we build that muscle. Yeah. And so in our last segment, I can't believe it's going to be our last segment coming up. (laughs) Everybody stay with us because um, one of the ways that Carmen really has helped me to understand this is it's a certain phrase. It's a certain frame. um, It's a certain way of being with ourselves where we have an opportunity to love, forgive, release. And when we come back more with my friend and coach Carmen Marshall in a space of allowing, we'll be right back. A space of allowing radio with coach Nancy Coco. Welcoming all that wants to be present today. Tune in Thursdays every first and third week at 9 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com as Coach Nancy helps you find a space of allowing. Join Coach Nancy to explore what lives at your edges and to bring more of yourself home. For more information, visit NancyCocoCoaching.com. Tune in to People Like Us Radio with Megan Lyons, transcending the trauma of the human experience. Megan will be raising the universal consciousness by empowering listeners with their own inner strength, working past trauma and abuse. Megan will show you how to find true healing and inner peace through the art and practice of self-love. Tune in every first and third Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. For more information about Megan and her work, visit EnterTheLightLLC.com. Calling all ladies. Are you struggling with neck, back, shoulder pain, or postural issues? You actually might have a related bra problem. Talk to Maria Monti at the Healthy Bra Company. She is a professional postural therapist who offers custom fitted, custom altered bras in 2,500 size combinations specific to your body type, shape, size, anatomical features, and breast weight. Call Maria today to find out more at 360 815 3205. Beyond Symptom Management into True Wellness with Jessica Dooley on Purely You Radio. Tune in every third Wednesday at 1 p.m. Pacific as Jessica guides you to find and embrace your purest self. Not the self that is shown on social media, not the self that is created in your family's eyes, but your purest version of you. Purely You Radio supports true wellness, not just symptom management. For more information about working with Jessica Dooley, visit purelyyouhealing.com.
Hello, everyone, and thank you all for remaining with us for this really special hour of allowing on the gift of forgiveness. Um, I'm feeling very stirred, and I said to Carmen in this brief break that I think this this show was really for me. So thank you, my dear friend, Carmen Marshall. How can everybody find you if we'd like to work with you? Well, I would love to hear from your listeners. They can email me at um, the year of plan A. T H E Y E A R of O F plan A P L A N A at gmail.com or they can reach me at Carmen at Carmen C Marshall.com or find me on the web on at Carmen C A R M E N C M A R S H A L L dot com. Awesome. So everything, all things Carmen Marshall, and um, we will be on my Facebook page posting some of this information. So in case you didn't have a pen and paper handy, uh, you can find me at nancycococoaching.com and also at Nancy Coco Coaching on Facebook. And um, I have a holiday seasonal special going on with coaching. So if you're interested in a discovery session, you can have a free hour of coaching to learn more about what it is and what it isn't. And perhaps if you're feeling stirred by this hour or some of the other segments we've had on allowing, uh, take a step in towards shifting the energy for yourself um, through the support of a coach. So we would love to be with you in that way. And Carmen, I know you have a special giveaway for everybody who's listening today, and that'll actually take us into what we want to talk about for the fourth segment. So can you offer that to listeners? How do we get that? Thank you. Yes, I'm happy to give um, to the listeners um, at no charge um, a downloadable guide called Love, Forgive, Release. And it talks uh, more about what we've discussed today and just about that three-step process um, in order to find a way to peace and happiness and just a, a satisfied soul. Yeah, beautiful. Wow. I mean, just all that right there. That sound bite was fabulous. Thank you. I look forward to listening to this over and over. I think it will calm myself <laughs> when times when I need it, because it's kind of like a wave that keeps crashing. You know, I think, mm-hmm. all right, I've calmed myself. Oh, here comes another wave, you know, and it's going <laughs> to crash. And I think that's just being in the world, you know, and I want to yep. be more open in the world. Like Brene Brown says, I want to be a turtle without a shell. I want to be out there <laughs> living. And yet uh, I'm going to get banged around a lot. And, um, and it really depends on how we, uh, internalize and how we release the things that happen to us, um, you know, as to how happily we will actually live, what kind of a fulfilled life that we will have. So as we continue to unpack this gift of forgiveness, how would you like to enter in, in this final segment that we have together? What are some things that you want to make sure that we get to share before we have to go? You know, I'm thinking about, a. Um, a phrase a friend of mine used to say to me all the time, she's passed on, but she used to say, Carmen, people do the best that they can. Yeah. And it was just a reminder to me that we are fragile human beings. Mm -hmm. And if we give each other that space to change, to even when I, work with organizations and groups and teams, um, I always encourage them to give each other room to space, to uh, space to um, grow and to change. You know, um, we can be very rigid, you know, um, mm-hmm. and we want to be, um, we want to judge others um, by their actions. And yet we want to be judged by our intent. And so, <laughs> We need to give other people the room, the same room that we want to, the room to be able to say, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Um, Room to change, room to grow, room to do better. Um, And I think that um, that the the guide will help people, um, one, to understand how deeply loved they are. That's that's critical um, to know that you mean um, everything to God and that you have a special gift. And that's why, Nancy, when you and I and others, we surround other people, we create an environment where they're free to change and to grow and to, yes. um, to inquire and to, you know, ask questions and to um, make mistakes and, and know that they're incubated in this love chamber 
right? We call it community. Right? <laughs> I love that. We call it it's community. It's so true. I call it space of allowing. And of course, it's that we're incubated yeah. in the love chamber. I love that. But, but we, yeah. we know it's safe to say things and to yeah. do things and yeah. to learn and to be told, you know, you're loved no matter what, but we're going to help you grow. Yeah. Right. And even in the workplace, it's the same thing. It's no different than if we were at your retreat. Just because we have bosses and leaders and staff people and all of that, each person needs to know that they're valued and won't be penalized um, for every misstep. Right. And, well, and, and sometimes we have to say that to ourselves because perhaps the environment is not giving us that message. Mm-hmm. You know, so again, I can't be externally focused. I can't hope that the answer lies outside there with you or with someone else. I have to know right. that. I I need to hold myself steady inside, that I need to love myself, that I need to forgive my shortcomings, yep. my little yep. sad, frightened self that shows up. I need to make friends with her because yeah. that's the way that I can be most healed and most holy. And, you know, even in, in our relationships, sometimes there's only one question to be asked. Not did they hurt me, not did they mess up, not did they, you know really foul things up. The question Mm. is, do you want that relationship? Mm. Right? That's a question that can bring children and parents back together. Well, yeah, right? Right, because that that sort of clears the table, right? So so this is, we're putting it on the line. Right. Do we want this relationship? Do you want the relationship? Sometimes your kid comes in with purple hair and green socks and you go, and what? (laughs) What is this? Right? (laughs) But the question is, do you want the relationship or do you want to ostracize your mm-hmm. child? Mm-hmm. Right. Sometimes, yeah. you know, it's a, it yeah. kind of gives you a chance to reset, almost to like hit the reset button and remember yourself. Exactly. Again. Like, mm-hmm. of course, I want this relationship. Of course I do. And then that right. kind of again, that kind of like clears my eyes and enables me to see fresh again, because if right. I go and- racing off with a thousand things you know, injustices and hurts in my arms, you know, there's no, there's no room to hug somebody that I care for that I say is worth fighting for. Or even in the work environment, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we just shut down and think, okay, I'm just going to work. I'm not going to engage with people. And, but that's no way to be. It's unhealthy for you and it's unhealthy, you know, um, for others to just shut down. Oh, right, well, it's unsustainable, a... really, I have to say. I mean, and again, <laughs> shall I get an amen on this one? I mean, you cannot <laughs> shut up. You can't go into safety mode and cover yourself up with the biggest turtle shell you can find and hope that nobody beats you up today. I mean, it just, you can't sustain that. So something's got to give. Yes. And so rather than looking outside and blame and blame and it's her fault and his fault and I can't do this anymore and la, 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 I got to look back inside. And I use my car time. A lot of times I use my car mm-hmm. time to pray, to talk to myself, to talk to spirit, to sort out and to try to slow my roll because I get my my thoughts start to race sometimes when I'm not in that space of allowing myself to mm-hmm. um, be ready to receive be ready to give, be ready to be in communion with anyone else. Um, And, you know, in this world of disinformation, you know, we also have these, you know, little people that pop up on our shoulders and feed us stories. Oh, mm -hmm. man, the stories we tell ourselves about what's going on. And it's all disinformation. Mm -hmm. It's like junk. I mean, I can you could tell that same story 20 times and there's some part of you maybe that's satisfied or thinks it is by <laughs> counting that story, but you, you can't, it's like a storm that comes over your head and just keeps thundering. It just keeps dumping snow on you. It never moves yeah. past, you know, you, no. you don't allow the storm to pass because, you know, perhaps there's some part of you that, that feels, uh, I don't know, justified or satisfied or so hurt that you can't move through. And I'll tell you in just this last minute mm-hmm. that we have, what a blessing it has been to be with you, Carmen, and what a joy it is to be with all the listeners in this space of allowing, because the gift of forgiveness, you know, I think that sharing this time with you all may even very well have shined a light or shifted a little something or enabled us to breathe a little bit differently, you know, that we're in that incubator of love. And both Carmen and I are coaches who 
who welcome the opportunity to provide that space of allowing for you. And you can find us either on Facebook or through our websites and certainly, you know, take advantage of loving support to come back to yourself, give yourself the gift of forgiveness so that you can hold yourself in love and be more loving and forgiving of others. Carmen, I love being with you. Final thoughts? Yeah, I would challenge your listeners, um, Nancy, that if they would, during this season, just um, think about one person that they would want to forgive and just ask, do I want their relationship? Mm. And just decide to begin the process to love, forgive, release. Just take that one step. Beautiful. And let us hear about it. Thank you so much. Yeah, meet us on Facebook at Nancy Coco Coaching. We'll be doing some responses to your messages. Reach out for Carmen's Guide, Love, Forgive, Release. Enjoy the season and the, all the turning of the year into the new year. Whenever you listen to the show, we wish you uh, the gift of forgiveness. Remember, it's one of the greatest gifts you can give yourself to forgive. Forgive everybody. Carmen, thank you yeah. for this time. And we'll see you Big all hugs. Yeah. in a space of allowing. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for listening to A Space of Allowing Radio with Coach Nancy Coco welcoming all that wants to be present today. Tune in Thursdays every first and third week at 9 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com as Coach Nancy helps you find a space of allowing, a unique environment where all beings and all energies are welcome to show themselves and be loved. Join Coach Nancy for some deep allowing to explore what lives at your edges and to bring more of yourself home. For more information or to listen to this show, visit nancycococoaching.com.